Hey, welcome! This week we're gonna learn to do this. <laughs> Little bit hot, but let me show you how to do this in DaVinci Resolve 18. So that's the final result, but let's reset it and let's get started together. First, convert your clip into a new compound clip. Why? You will want the clip to start on frame 1. You don't want the extract of a clip to start at frame 1000, that's gonna be complicating things later. Then, bring the fire! There we go, green screen, we need to remove that. We know exactly how to do it, we've done it before. I've got a video here or there. But here I'm gonna use the 3D keyer technique, very simple. Go into your effect, search for the 3D keyer, drag and drop it into your clip on the timeline. Don't forget to turn your selector from transform to effects overlay. And then in the inspector, go and select your color select tool. Otherwise you won't be able to apply it. And then you can simply drag across the green. Not like I'm doing here, I've messed up. I'm gonna mess up a couple of times, so let's reset it, that's completely fine. Let's do a new selection, there you go. Now, I've got a bit of green extra. I can remove that different ways. I can use the clean black, clean white. Usually one of them works quite well. But here, I know that when I've got that kind of grain, it's a spill. So I'm gonna go into the D spill, increase that until I find the result to be roughly satisfying, exactly like so. Okay, so now from here, We'll just adjust a little bit. I don't need the fire all the way through from the beginning or the end. I wanted my clip to start at the same time, but it doesn't mean that my first frame needs to be at the same time, right? I can just drop things. I need to adjust the placement, so I'm gonna do that now. You can use the zoom and the position settings, or you can again go back to your overlay, get the transform one, and then you can simply move things around. Whichever works better for you, I think both works well. And there you go. You've got the fire in the hand, job's done. And not so fast. See, my hands move, but not the fire. I need to get those two in sync. So to do that, that's gonna be fairly easy. I'm gonna select my original clip, right click, go to fusion, and now we're gonna need to track it on the plane. So for that, I'm gonna add a plane tracker. And before we go any further with the settings, I'm gonna make a few changes here. Let's increase the size, right? I'm gonna want to track my hands, so let's make that way bigger. Let's bring that second view, let's zoom in. Let's try to look a little bit professional, right? We're making mistake, but it doesn't mean we don't aim to be professional. Now, this frame here is a bit blur. I will want to increase that, or to change the frame rather than increase, to a frame that is a bit more sharp, where I'm gonna get more detail. So I'm gonna be looking for a frame where I've got the detail I want. I found one here, and I will be able to draw a shape around my thumb. That's exactly the area I want to track. Once I've got the area I want to track, I'll be able to fix the setting. So let's quickly draw a shape around my finger here to be able to track it, we can see that being reflected in the smaller one. I kind of like how they both work together, but enough of that nonsense. Motion type, remove perspective, put translation and rotation. We want to be able to track right and left, up and down and rotation. We don't need to get the perspective. And once we've got that, we track backward and we track forward. If Da Vinci is throwing an error at you, that's completely fine. Don't forget to set your reference frame. For me, that was that sharp one, so I needed to go back and set that reference or and then I could go back to it later. From there, I've got all my data points. I can create my plan tracker. With my plan tracker, I will now be able to go back to my edit page, into my fire clip, and add that plane tracker as a transform, if you want, to move that fire over time. Now, the moment I'm dropping that transform planner, we'll be able to see that all of those keyframes are being respected. That's why we wanted to get both of our clips starting at the same time. Now that I've done this, let's come back and see what we have in the edit. And it's kind of there, right? In my case, my clip wasn't always sharp. I was moving maybe a little bit too much. So it's really hard to get it perfect. So I'm gonna look at it and fix it manually. So a couple of keyframing, I'm gonna accelerate this because no need to look at this in real time on your site. So I'm gonna go through it. But basically what I'm gonna be doing is frame by frame, I'm gonna be adjusting the little position of the fire just to make sure that I've got it as accurate as I want it to. From here, once I've got everything I need, I'll be ready to move to the next step. You might already guess it by looking at it now, right? But that fire doesn't really look natural. It's coming on top of everything where I'd like it to be in the palm of my hand, which means if I hold any object like this clip, for example, it is behind my finger, right? If I got it completely in the front, it doesn't look as realistic. So that's exactly what you're gonna do now. To do so, I'm gonna select my clip. I'm gonna make sure to only select the video track I'm gonna do that by pressing Option on my keyboard and I'm on Mac. I'm sure there's an option on Windows, I just have to look it up. And then keeping Option pressed, I'm gonna drag that clip above the fire to be able to duplicate it, drop the piece that I don't need, 
and then I will be able to go into my color page to do a bit of masking. I'm mixing a couple of techniques here in this tutorial, but that's the kind of things I've already covered in other video on my channel. So if you're feeling a little bit confused and you're not sure how to do any of those things, feel free to go back and watch any of those videos. Here I'm going to draw the mask around my hand. I'm going to select my fingers um, just at the bottom. I don't need to be super accurate. That's not the point. I can keep the bottom. That's going to be exactly the same. I just need to be slightly careful on the top. Here, what I will want to do is to add my alpha output to make sure that what I'm not covering with my mask is being see-through, otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to add my alpha output. I'm going to connect my note to my alpha output. Now, to make this mask a little bit more natural, I'm going to increase the smoothing here, making sure that I've got a bit of space around the fingers so you can move from the outside or inside, increase the softness, play with those settings a little bit. But what we want to have is a feeling that, you know, the fire is kind of radiating from around rather than having that sharp cut. We want to get a bit of blurness to make it look a little bit more natural. And as always, don't be afraid to zoom in if you want to be able to have more detail. But here we can see I've got roughly that mask. I can see my fingers. I can see with the highlight. And now I'm ready to go. From here, what we will want to do is to be able to make sure that as I'm moving my hand, as I'm moving my fingers, I will want my mask to move with me. Let's make sure to go into the tracker and to change the settings from clip to frame. What this will do is just make sure that from frame to frame, as we're going to adjust the mask, it's going to create a keyframe and have a new entry. Otherwise, we're just going to keep moving the mask all along. And when you're done after 10 minutes of work, you go back and realize that nothing was saved because you apply the same mask across the old clip. When in reality, you want to have a different mask at different point in time. That's why we're doing it by frame. And here as well, I'm going to go frame by frame, adjust my settings here towards the end. I'm moving my mask, not at the bottom of the hand, but kind of just above to make sure that my fire is not completely big. So it can kind of grow frame by frame kind of starting from my hand and then just kind of growing up. I'm doing this at the beginning. I'm doing this at the end. And now my mask is set. I've got all of my keyframe. I'm happy with my position. I'm happy with my uh, reveal. I'm happy with my masking and my overlay of my fingers. It looks like it's coming from the middle of my hand. I'm not ready for the very next step. So let's go back in the edit page. And before we go into the next step, let's maybe finish fixing this, right? You might have seen it. That fire looks really bright in my hand. So what I want to do is reducing the opacity, making it a little bit more transparent. So I'm going to introduce some keyframes with the diamond and then I'm going to reduce the opacity to 60%. I'm going to do that at the beginning and then at the end, I'm going to do the same thing, going from 100% to 60 to make it fade away. Before we talk about sound design and anything like that, let's talk a little bit about fire and fire have, you know, that kind of gas going above, or at least that distortion above them due to the heat. So for me to be able to show you that, I need to introduce a title. So I'm just going to throw fire effect here very quickly. I'm going to add some border. I'm going to play around some shading. I'm not going to detail this too much because it's not really the point of this video. But if you're interested, let me know in the comment section below and I'll make a tutorial on how we can make some nice title like this and play around with some of those effects. So now that I've got my title, it's time to introduce some haze. Let's add an adjustment layer. Why? Because I will want my adjustment layer to impact everything below it. From here, we go back into the color page and we can just add an effect. It's going to be the fast noise. The moment I drop it, it looks completely off, but that's fine. Go back in the settings, change it from custom to fire haze, play a little bit with the settings and you should be nearly there. Now, I don't want the fire haze to be on everything, right? The fire is only in my hand. So to reduce it or to constrain it a little bit, we're going to use another power window, a lot of power window today. Don't forget to connect the alpha output to make sure that everything outside of the power window is being able to see through and doesn't impact the layer underneath. And once we've got this, create the power window, position it on the end, adjust the settings, play a little bit around and then you should be good to go. From there, back to editing, a bit of sound design, adding some fire effects, some cracking, making sure we give really that vibe of fire so not only we can hear it, but we can see it, we can feel it. A bit of sound design again for the whoosh effect when I invoke the fire. And from there, we're good to go. That's the result that we have. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you learn anything. I'm trying different formats. I'm trying to go a little bit real time with you, trying to comment a little bit. But this is it. That's it for today. Until next time. Ciao.